Hello, welcome to AC Motor Control number 8. How are you all doing? Following on from last week's video where I spun up the big motor, I want to look this week into a little bit of pseudocode before I do the coding of the Arduino for the closed loop. So let's look about closed loop systems and how it's going to work and it's not definite yet but I'm just discussing some ideas. So yeah, let's have a look into it. Start looking at the timings. So I've just drawn this. Um, pretty easy. You've got your again your, your six stepper transistors there. Your three coils in a star configuration. Oh, by the way, someone asked if I could show the difference. Well, that's delta, and that's star. So delta is where the end of one joins the end of another and what this what this will do is lower the it'll lower the resistance of the coils because you're you're actually going across one coil at each phase at each uh, pulse whereas on star you're actually always going through two coils in series so it'll draw less current in star yeah does that make sense so you've got um delta like this and stars wide like this you there's your three cables on, on a star, and there's your three cables on a delta. So that's that. So that's how we're wired up, and that's your three switchers, your three half bridges. And these are your six steps of commutation. So that's that's these. So that step one is that one switched on and that one switched on. Step two is that one switched on and that one switched on. Got it? So there's your six steps, and, and as we go through the six steps, here's what we've got across A, B, and C. You see I've drawn a sinusoid. So you've got A, then B, then C. So this would be 100% duty cycle. So, no gaps. So what we want to do is start to look at the timing. Um, and so we can control voltage and frequency um, looking at the rotor position and the rotor speed controlling the frequency of these outputs and um, for this little my little drive topology which I'm trying to I'm trying to perfect um, I want a, a, a way to work out a pulse width to give a, a certain uh, to give a certain voltage out or a certain push to that coil. I'm not sure yet how I want to do it. I want to do a couple of pulses or one pulse. I've got to do some tests for that. Well, I think it looks promising. So just a quick look. You've got 12 steps for one revolution on a four pole motor. Don't forget that. Um, so what have I written here? 60 RPM is one revolution per second. So 60 RPM is one RPS. And that equals 12 steps per second. And um, 124 RPM, 2 revolutions per second is 24 steps per second, etc. So if we look at this, I think I was just looking at, um, yeah, I think I was just looking at a 2 pole and a 4 pole, so that would be 6 steps and 12 steps. Um, you know, 83 milliseconds and 166 milliseconds, 167 milliseconds, sorry, for for each motor. So, what we're going to start doing then is stop using the delay function in the software and start using uh, millis and micros functions with variables to count and count in those variables. So. I want to start talking to you about the microsecond delay time period because we're going to start using that. Um, the microsecond delay or the microsecond pulse input counts in microseconds. So when you use the pulse command, it will count um, between a high state and a low state of a pin. Um, 
and then give you the amount of microseconds that the pin went high and low so that's the value it will return um, also if we do want to use a delay micro which we're not gonna we're not going to use that anymore um, you don't really want to go below three that uh, above three thousand microseconds because at that point three milliseconds because at that point it starts to lose its accuracy and this is an Arduino thing um, so yeah that's about as much for that that's a bit sorry about that because I was going to use that little eight eight pulse sensor but I'm going to use it I'm going to build a 12 pulse sensor so that was just me looking at um, 12 steps over eight pulses so uh, just working out how you would get to that 4.166 um, yeah so it's 0 0.666 of this so that that is 0 0.666 of that so it was to get from 8 steps to 12 steps but I've decided not to do that now anyway it's just because that little motor I used had an 8 step tachograph on it that's all that was so what we want to do then is start looking at pseudocode we need some sort of starting program and we need to be able to run it and control the torque while it's running um, so just a couple of notes to start we need to force an output and then whilst we're forcing the output in other words force the six steps so it pushes the motor around and then as it's doing that it wants to monitor the input from the position sensor in so and then when, once it picks up a good signal off the position sensor, then that takes over. Does that make sense? So you have to sort of force an output to start with. Maybe just, you know, 50, mic microse uh, 50 milliseconds or something like that. Or, and then as soon as that is picked up, it, it, it goes over to closed loop control. So, yeah, and, and I was thinking along the lines of um, if pulse time is less than a set value it goes back to open loop control so basically if the motor stalls it would it would if it would uh straight away it would try to run the start sequence again so yeah and then switch to input closed loop once once it's out of that right and then for run i've put monitor pulse times transfer to a pulse output a pulse output generate a, f a slip frequency uh, remove some time from the pulse in to the timeout, which will run field faster than the rotor. So that will be how your slip frequency is calculated somehow. That should be quite easy. Um, and then to control torque, the pulse sense can be used to work out the pulse time width. Yes, now I, I thought about this. If we know the rotor speed, uh, we can work out the pulse time width from that along with and, and I want the, we need the pulse to get longer with speed although do we because as the speed increases so does the um, the the step the commutation steps times decrease so yeah, that's a funny one so I'm gonna have to do a bit more research into that um, so we make a speed variable RPM um, which monitors speed of uh, magnetic field and rotor field and generates an error signal and then I've, I've written as speed increases step time decreases um, so let's look at that let's have a look at that what I've done oh yeah and I wanted you guys to look at the blink without delay function on Arduino website that will get you into uh, not using the delay because basically the delay shuts down the entire program. And what I've done here is just a quick look, quick simulation of different RPMs that the motor's running at. So it's a four pole RPM, a four pole motor. So I'm thinking, uh, at two, basically you've got motor running at 250 RPM. It's gonna be 20 milliseconds between, uh, you switch in between steps. And then obviously 500 RPM is gonna be 10 milliseconds. 240 milliseconds per revolution, but 20 millis per step. So you've got 12 steps to complete one revolution. So this will actually be 20 milliseconds per step. So that's um, step one, step two. You can only see step three on that one. Um, and then at 500 RPM, you've got 10 milliseconds per step. 
then at 1000 RPM, 5 milliseconds per step. So it looks more like that. 2000 RPM, uh, 2.5 milliseconds per step. 4000 RPM, uh, 1.25 millis per step. And at 8000 RPM, which will probably make the max, is um, 625 microseconds per step, which would look more like that. Now what I've done, the coloured in parts, is the switching on time. Now obviously for 8000 RPM, your maximum RPM that you program in, that's going to have to have your maximum uh, a maximum sw switch in time. That's going to have to be your maximum switch in time. You can't go, you can't switch longer than 625 micros per step. Now what I'm thinking is, there's another thing that I'll need testing. Can I can I switch more than 625 micros per, say for example, here? Let's say that that's 625 micros on 500 RPM. Now, I wouldn't really want to go above that. Otherwise, if I went... Now, what, what I'm thinking is if I went above this on period at the full bus voltage, this would be my maximum torque. If I went above this level, I would be overfluxing the motor. So I'll, I'll run some tests on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what would that's what would happen because... Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if I if I did overflux it, it's just going to saturate the cores at any 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 point above this. So what I want it to do is um, precisely time that pulse so that that one pulse there at full voltage will be at the precise time, either if it's a BLDC or a, or an induction, when that BLDC motor becomes maximum torque, so it's ninety degrees to its uh, to its coils. That will then thump it along, but the rest of it, where it's not so strong, it will it will ignore. So I want to see what sort of outputs we get off the motor with that. So I'm thinking if we do any more than this level here, so that'll have to be sort of set in to software. Then that, this will just be an overflux region. Again with this, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to fire any more than this part, and then leave all that off. So, yeah, I mean, obviously you're going to get a little bit less output, but I want to see what happens to the power input versus the power output with this topology. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, so I'm looking at that. Oh, yeah, just to carry on from last week. Which one is it? So, here's this one. So we're saying it's uh, 4,000 RPM at... Oh, sorry, yes, it wasn't 625 millis, it was uh, actually one, 125 micros, uh, 1,250 micros, or 1.25 millis, so it's actually, this is my maximum switch in, so it's actually here, so they're a little bit bigger, That anything beyond that point, I'm assuming, would be overfluxing, so does that make more sense? Um, this is a field weakening area, and I'll just show you this now. So, it's a quick, just quick because the time is running out. So you've got voltage here up to 300. So this is your max torque region, max torque. So it's a 4,000 RPM rated motor at 300 volts. Now we can bring it beyond 4,000 RPM, called the field weakening region, and your torque will start to drop off at this point. As you reach in sort of silly RPMs, and um, and then also you're just going to work out your voltage rating divided by your RPM rating equals your volts per RPM value. So that should give you the voltage out. Um, so if you take 4,000 RPM at 300 volts, if you take your volt uh, voltage divided by your RPM rating, it will give you 0.075 volts per RPM. So for every 1 RPM of speed, you need 0.075 volts. So that's how you generate that curve. So for example, 3000 RPM would be 225 volts. Uh, 500 RPM would only be 37.5 volts. Right, so uh, great. Out of time again, <laughs> but I'll see you next week. We'll do a bit more in depth for that. I'll start maybe doing some programming. Yeah, cool. See you guys next week.